Do you have a Flash Forge Adventure 5M and you're looking to maximize its potential? We'll stick around for today's video and find out how. All right, what's up everyone? Back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dead. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out today's video. If it's your first time here and you are a big fan of 3D printing just like I am, make sure you click the subscribe button. Come back and see the long list of videos I have on deck in the 3D printing world. But today we're gonna be talking about a very popular and one of my favorite printers that I have, the Flash Forge Adventure 5M. Now I've had this printer for a little bit over a year and I absolutely fell in love with it. Uh, I love the speed, the core XY design, the easy user interface, the quality uh, of prints that it was pumping out. Uh, it was really great and I really have nothing bad to say about the printer. However, like many of us, we start to add more and more printers to our print farm and with new printers you get different features and I pretty much got accustomed to the printers that have you know the built-in Wi-Fi the auto bed leveling but as more and more of these new printers come out they have the built-in uh, enclosed chambers they have the LED lights they have cameras uh, and these were things that I was all getting accustomed to to my new printers but my Flash Forge 5M lacked that. Luckily for 5M users, these are all mods that you can do that are pretty simple and pretty straightforward. And today we're gonna to be doing just that, um, maximizing its efficiency, adding some cool features by adding LED lights, a camera, and turning it into an enclosed printer with Flash Forge's DIY kit. Installing all of these upgrades pretty much in that orders with the lights, the camera, and then the enclosure. See just how these upgrades helped and let you know what I think about everything at the end of the video. We'll let the modding begin. Let's get all these accessories cracked open, installed, and see just how well they do. Let's go. So today we're going to be modifying the Adventure 5M, adding LEDs, a camera, and converting it to an enclosed printer using the Flash Forge DIY enclosure kit. This trifecta of upgrades is great if you're trying to get the 5M Pro feel and features for a fraction of the cost. These upgrades will add convenience, peace of mind, and when paired with the FlashMaker app, really enhance your whole printing experience. First thing we're going to do is install the LED lights. From what I've seen, installing only one won't really give you the required light, especially when using the camera, so we'll be installing two. The lights come with the harnesses and magnets to mount the LED bars, but we do need to print the mounts and the board covers. So once you have those printed, you can pop the magnets into the openings of each mount. They slide in with a little bit of force, and if they're a little tight, add some heat with a heat gun or a lighter to soften the filament that allows for an easier install. After that, pop the board cover mounts on as these will keep the magnet mounts in place and protect the solder joints on the lights when mounted. Once you have the mounts on, you can test the lights for fitment and clearance. The magnets will do the work as they'll adhere to the metal frame and it's best for you to take your print head carriage and move it front to back near the light bar to ensure clearance. And here's just another view of how the LED should look and clear once they're installed. Next we need to access the back of the printer and run our power and harness. Remove the screws, unplug your main power for safety reasons and look for the yellow plug. That's where we'll gain power from for the LEDs. Plug the harness in and look for a small opening to run the harness through. Using a flat panel tool, gently tuck the wire in toward where the LED bar is mounted. Doing this ensures the harness is clear from obstruction and won't come loose. Then route the remainder of the harness toward the LED light and plug it in. Now to hook up the other LED, we have to daisy chain the LEDs together, so take your harness from the second LED, plug it into the opposite end of the light bar and run it back through the same direction as the first harness. You want the harness tucked tight behind the light and I found the LED tag label restricts folding the wire tighter and neater so feel free to snip that off. Tuck the wire closely behind the magnet mount and route your wire back down behind the board. Once your harness is ran, simply find the opening, route your harness up toward the second LED bar, tuck the harness in like we did the first time, plug the LED bar in and remount to the printer frame. Ensure there's no loose or hanging wires and check clearance by moving the print head along the axis. Once cleared, I advise zip tying your harness wires in place just for peace of mind. Then plug your main power back in and turn on your printer and test the lights. And as you can see, they turn right on with no issues. Next, we can move on to installing the camera. With the printer turned off, you're going to mount the camera in the right corner just below where the touchscreen for the printer is. Line up the mounting hole on the camera to the hole on the printer frame and tighten in place with the supplied screw. Then gently apply some pressure while supporting the screen and it should pop off towards the right off of the frame mount to gain access to the rear of the display. You can see there's a plug on the back so simply route the camera harness up and plug it into the back of the screen. 
put the touchscreen back in place, but you don't have to fully lock it in place as we will need to remove it again when we add the enclosure frame on the top. Power on your machine and under the gear options or settings, simply turn on both picture and video options. If you haven't binded your printer to FlashForge's FlashMaker app, now is the time. And once set up, you can check a live feed to see if the camera's working and do a quick test print to see if the time-lapse feature is working properly, and you can see here that it is. So now that we have the lights and the camera working, let's move on to our enclosure. This is FlashForge's DIY kit. It includes instructions, hardware, plexiglass, and some pieces we'll have to swap out, plus a list of pieces that we'll need to 3D print to complete our enclosure. The files are available on the FlashForge website. You can also find them on printables, but you want to print every piece listed in the instructions. All of the pieces print nice and easy and are all labeled to simplify assembly and installation. So beginning the assembly, we can start off by putting together the top. These pieces just line up and with a good push click together, no glue or anything is needed. I wanted to add a little effect, so I printed the FlashForge insignia in white to overlay on the top. Once those were printed with just a few dabs of super glue, I placed them on and installed those for a nice color contrasting look. Starting with the frame next, grab your B1 and B2 panels and install your hinges. We'll need the M3 screws and nuts as they go in the recessed part of the panel. Once in place, simply screw each hinge into each individual panel. Next, on the top right of the printer, remove the top two screws and install panels A1 and A2. You'll need to pop off your touchscreen, so gently let that hang or uninstall it and mount the frame panels. The two top screws you took out will go back in place, the printed panels will overlap each other, then using the supplied M4 screws to fasten and secure the rest of the frame cover onto the printer frame. Now we can move over to the other side and repeat the same process that we just did. Remove the top two screws and we're going to install the B1 and B2 panels that we just put the hinges on. Use the two factory screws we removed at the top and the M4 screws to fasten in place just like we did on the A panels. Now we can move on to the right rear of the printer using the D1 and D2 panels. These panels slide into each other, not overlap, so you can just take them and click them together and make sure that the tab is facing towards the front. You can see on the A1 panel, the tab is facing towards the back. That's because these tabs will hold the plexiglass panels in place. Remove the factory top screw and the bottom Allen head screw and secure the panel back into place with those screws that you just removed and then secure the remaining openings in place with the M4 screws just like we did the first two. Only one panel left and we're using the C1 and C2 panels. Just repeat the same process that you did for the D panels. Remove the top and bottom factory screws, then reinstall everything with the 3D printed frame in place. Now with our basic frame installed, we can start putting in the plexiglass panels. Start by grabbing the plexiglass panel fasteners that we 3D printed. Uh, I did mine in white. You should have printed six total, three for each side. You'll find a bunch of small magnets in your DIY kit. Pop those into the fasteners, then remove the protective film from your plexiglass and slide the left and right plexiglass panels into place. You'll see that there's holes at the top of the plexiglass and that's where those fasteners with the magnets go. Pop those in and you'll see the magnets stick right to the metal frame of the printer, holding the plexiglass firmly in place. Simply repeat that process on the other side of the printer with the plexiglass and double check to make sure everything is lined up and firmly in place on both sides. Now we can install the front plexiglass door. First grab two small magnets supplied in the kit and pop those into the handle. These guys can be a bit tricky since they don't require glue, it's a snug fit. So don't be afraid to use a tool to help get them in place. The handle installs like this, so remove the protective film and using the supplied screws, mount the handle where the holes are. Next, take the plexiglass panel and using the same screws, mount the door to the hinges on the front of the printer. It's best to open and close the door a few times and make sure it lines up. Adjust it as needed and tighten the hinge screws down when it's set in place. Now we move on to the top frame panel and we have a bunch of small magnets that we have to install. These magnets can be really hard to install, so I wanted to show you an easier way to do it. Grab a soldering iron and let it heat up. Place a magnet on the frame and pick it up with the soldering iron. After a few seconds, the magnet will get hot enough and it'll heat the filament up and slide in super easy. Because the magnet is hot, use a flathead screwdriver or side cutters to ensure it's flush. Repeat this on the whole frame. You'll see it leaves you with the magnets installed flush, tight, and trust me, it saves a lot of time and frustration. Now we move to the back of the printer and remove the screws holding the filament runout sensor and unplug the harness. Remove the cotter pins holding the PTFE tubing in and remove the tubing from the sensor as well. Next, mount the filament runout sensor on your spool holder. 
Make sure the harness plug lines up with the opening on the rack, as seen here. Start by installing the supplied nuts into the bottom of the spool rack, followed by the required screws and fasten it into place. Once secured, place the rack around the print head wire and guide the runout sensor through the hole and plug it in. Now secure the spool rack into place with the required screws and remove the clips and the factory PTFE tubing. Now that the factory tubing and clips are gone, we can install our snail chain. Make sure the open end is facing the spool rack as our printed clasp needs to fasten to this end. Run both the print head wire and the new PTFE tubing through the chain. The end of the snail chain is secured by our 3D printed part and you can see the tabs lock in the recessed holes both on the rack and the printed top mount. Check to make sure the chain moves okay then install the two screws to secure it in place. Once the chain is installed and moving freely, we next need to swap out the factory print head cover for the new one. Remove the two rear harness support screws, then the top print head screw on each side. Remove the front fan carriage and the top will slide right off. We have to install this new top that the snail chain mounts to and run the print head harness through it first. It's best to power down your machine if you have it on when you're unplugging and plugging harness in. So if you do have your printer on, just turn it off. Once powered down, simply unplug the print head harness from the rear and run the harness through the front of the mount and over the top. Slide the mount until it meets the snail chain and click it into place. It should move side to side freely as seen here. Then simply plug the harness back in, ensuring it's in all the way and install the new print head cover. Start with the screws on each side, then make sure the print head harness is lined up and reinstall the harness support bracket with the screws. Use the supplied screw to install the swivel bracket on top of the print head and reinstall the fan shroud, which pops into place with the factory magnets. We no longer need the rear filament mount, so you can take that off as well. Our touchscreen display will now be held in place by magnets, so we have to install some on the front panel here. I did a small dab of glue just to be safe before installing. You need two magnets in each opening, and because they're pretty snug, I found it's best to line them up and then use an Allen wrench to push them in flush. Once the magnets are installed, we can finally install the top. Carefully remove the touchscreen display. Hopefully you didn't push it in too hard and it should just wiggle off. Unplug the camera harness first, then pull the gray clip holding the ribbon harness in toward you and the harness will slide right out. Now you can take your top panel and place it on top of the printer. I did have to push it on a tad and kind of lock it in place, but once the magnets grabbed on and it lined up with the other corner pieces, it was solid, firm, and in place. Once that top piece is locked in, you can just run your camera harness up through the larger hole in the frame and the ribbon cable for the display, slide it through the small, slimmer opening. With the harnesses ran through, we gotta get everything plugged in. Start with plugging the ribbon cable back in because it is a little bit longer. Slide it in and pull the gray tab toward you, locking the cable in place. Then plug the camera harness back in and guide the screen back into place. The magnets will do their job anchoring the screen firmly into place on the frame. You can then power up the printer to make sure everything is plugged in and working and no settings came undone while it was unplugged. If anything came undone, simply turn those settings back on through the settings menu. Winding down here, take the top plexiglass, remove the film, and screw the FlashForge logo knob in place. Install and secure the PTFE tubing as it runs through the top frame and into the sensor. And always be sure everything is working, so a quick filament load and purge here shows everything is A-OK. -okay. Lastly, install the front fascia cover and these PTFE tubes in the spool rack, which helps the filament roll load. Mine were two different sizes, no clue why, but they work and that's really all that matters. And with that last panel on, that's pretty much it. We've just taken a totally stock Adventure 5M and gave it an awesome overhaul by adding LED lights for better visuals, a camera for remote monitoring, and enclosing it to not only safeguard the prints, but increase efficiency and help keep dust and other debris out that in time can wear out fans, rails, and more. Now that these big upgrades are a wrap, let's wrap this video up with some final thoughts. All right, guys, there is a look at my newly modded FlashForge Adventure 5M. Uh, really awesome upgrades to do if you have this printer and you're trying to get the 5M Pro feeling without actually paying for a 5M Pro. Uh, I was lucky enough to get all of these uh, accessories on Amazon Prime Day, so I didn't quite pay retail. Uh, the LEDs there, uh, they run about $13 each. Uh, the camera is somewhere around $35. And then obviously the uh, DIY kit uh, is about 40 bucks. And then you will probably use somewhere around $20 in filament uh, to print the enclosure. 
Really did not have any issues installing or doing any of it. Uh, I tried to touch on some of those important keys. I had seen numerous, numerous times uh, that people were messing up the ribbon cable and they take their touchscreen display off. You know, that is something that you have to be very, very uh, careful with. So one thing that I didn't touch on is orientation when you are printing the pieces for the DIY kit. You wanna print those uh, in an upright manner. Recently, I had seen somebody struggling on the Flash Forge page uh, and they just didn't orientate the pieces properly. So always print them upright obviously enable your supports so they do support any overhangs and things like that i would say probably the only hiccup uh, is a lot of people do complain about uh, the filament runout sensor uh, the way the tube actually runs through that it tends to pinch it i did notice that it is a little bit hard to get the filament through uh, you do have to cut the filament on an angle um, i plan on putting a filament dryer box down i noticed that when you do it from a bottom loading position it loads a lot easier but with my up i don't even know if i'm going to keep uh that top spool mount like that my my one marvel shelf is right there and it kind of gets in the way so i actually went on printables and i actually found a couple other uh, options there uh where you can do a different spool rack and the new mount does help uh kind of i guess relocate the ptfe tube so it doesn't quite pinch or uh, create that resistance when you are loading in the filament other than that pretty awesome experience you know modifying this printer and adding these upgrades have given me a whole new feel for this printer. I had said when I did my original video for the Flash Forge 5M that this might be the best 3D printer out there. It might be the best 3D printer, the best 3D printer, best 3D printer. Nice. And aside from the small build plate, I, I truly think it is the Core XY design, the printing speed, love the touchscreen display. Like I said, the enclosure, it just gives me a peace of mind and it makes the printer look kind of cool. You know, I went something simple. I just did black and white. I know other people do all kinds of, you know, crazy colors and that's cool. I just kind of wanted to make it still look, you know, a little bit factory. It's really like I got a, a brand new printer now with all these upgrades. Uh, love the LED lights, uh, love the camera, especially from the app. It's super, super cool just to be able to uh, check in on it. Uh, and obviously in closing it, it just, it feels safe. You know, my prints feel safer. It's able to keep that ambient chamber temperature more efficiently. Overall, it gives the clean, sleek look, and I couldn't be happier with all the upgrades. There are tons of printable accessories for the Flash Forge 5M. It's really cool. So if you do have a 5M and you're looking to customize it and add some, add some cool goodies, make sure to check out some of the options that I have on printables. I will make sure to leave a link in the description as well as all the accessories that I got. That way, if you are looking to give your 5M a facelift, add some efficiency, some peace of mind, and improve your prints, you can pick those accessories up. I wanna thank you guys for tuning in for today's video. If you liked it, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Questions, comments, concerns, you wanna just say what's up, or maybe you've done this mod or similar mods to your Adventure 5M, drop me a comment in the comment section. I know there are a lot of other different DIY printable uh, type enclosures. Uh, so if you've done a different one and maybe you just wanna add something in, for somebody who may be viewing this video, go ahead and drop me a comment. Would absolutely love to hear from you and your experience. And of course, if you do enjoy all things 3D printing, cosplay, DIY videos, tutorial videos, showcase videos, all the stuff that I'm doing in the 3D printing world, make sure you click that subscribe button, come back and see me. I never know what video is gonna be next, but all I can say is I do have a long list of to-do videos in the near future. So if you like any of that stuff, make sure you click the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, come back and see me. Well, that's a wrap on this video, guys, and my newly modded Adventure 5M. As much as I love to brag on how awesome the printer is now with all these mods, I gotta get moving on to the next project. Make sure to give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment, and don't forget to click the subscribe button. Until next time, it's DW out. Later.